Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Drinks and Demos. It's a special event we have going on. It's called Demo Night, and we're here with six startups from the Project Spaces community. First demo up is Zap. Mike Mason from Zap, say hi. Hey guys. Have you all downloaded Zap out there? Yes, okay, so you can be using it nice. as you go. So Mike, what is Zap? Uh, okay, so Zap is a, a neat little tool that sits on your iPhone that helps you discover more about the people that you meet. Uh, so we used to traditionally do this uh, using maybe a piece of paper that would be two and a half inches by three inches. Uh, now, given the number of social networks that we uh, interact with people on and the amount of information that we need to pack and send to people, uh, we figured we would kind of switch things up. Uh, and the result was what you're going to see tonight. So what's your story, Mike? You were born, now you're here. What happened in between? <laughs> um, so I uh, have been working with, with, in some capacity, with startups for the last five years. Uh, I've worked for a lot of different entrepreneurs, uh, anywhere from the idea phase of a startup to 60-person companies trying to solve scaling issues for CEOs. Um, I started off as a, as a kind of growth guy doing traditional marketing stuff like AdWords and SEO and content marketing for uh, an entrepreneur in Halifax, Nova Scotia uh, in the oil and gas industry doing a kind of like a web app for action tracking. And since then I've been just solving problems for other people for five years. And uh, about six months ago, uh, myself and my co-founder decided that we were going to quit our full-time jobs and we were going to start something for ourselves. And so where were you working before Zap? So my last job uh, was uh, building up a publishing business for a mobile gaming company in Ottawa. So uh, I, worked, I started off as a project manager in that, in that company. I worked on games like the New York Times Crosswords app, which would take your crossword puzzle that would appear in the New York Times paper, but it would deliver it to your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, I worked on games like Mattel's Phase 10 and Skipbo, the official Rubik's Cube app, if you've ever, ever played that on your iPad or your iPhone. Um, and then I did that for two years before I uh, decided to start doing this. Well, and you'd say it was that experience. There was this one specific pain point that you were down, I feel, at a conference. I think the story went. Yep. And that's when you realized the opportunity that Zap has. Yeah. So uh, the pu if you're in mobile gaming publishing, the, the experience is very similar to building a startup. So uh, maybe one in every 10, 10 games that you build will be a success, just like a startup. Uh, we had, were trying to de-risk our development studio. We were building games and we were shipping them. Sometimes they would be financially successful, sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, the de-risked version of that business model is a publishing business. So I would go to conferences all over the world and meet developers that were making great games that fit in within our content niche. Uh, I would try to convince them to uh, come in, uh, meet with us, talk about their game and whether we could distribute that content for them on RevShare. Um, and the biggest thing, if you're a salesperson or a biz dev role and you're meeting people at scale, it's very, very difficult to then get those people in some kind of software like a CRM tool that you might use in your day-to-day. -day. Um, so that's where the idea was birthed. Yeah. Okay, do you want to show me? So you have some new features that are coming out here. Yeah, so this is, you guys are getting a sneak peek. It's exclusive. Uh, we just shipped it today. But it's meant to be uh, the, CR, the extension to your CRM for when you're on the road. So if any of you are in sales roles, you'll know that you use a customer relationship management tool. Uh, you'll collect leads. You'll put them in the top of your funnel. You'll put them through a deal flow process. Hopefully at the, at the tail end, you'll make some money off of them. Uh, we sit at the beginning of that funnel. So um, these are people that I've met. Um, if Jeff's beside me and he has the app, uh, he single th signs on with his preferred social method and he can add details to his business card. Uh, he can change what it looks and feels like. Here's Toronto, I can be in space. I like being in space. Uh, and if Jeff flicks his card, we use beacon technology to understand where he is and where I am and it's kind of like a bump experience, right? This is what we went to market with. Um, I receive his contact details, I store them. Uh, I can search kind of more about what, what he's up to and what he's been saying online. Now, uh, the more recent version is something that we think is uh, pretty powerful. And if any of you use Reportive or any of these kind of like Gmail uh, attachments that help you understand more about the people that are emailing you, uh, that's kind of what we're trying to do now. So um, everyone knows Elon Musk. I don't know if any of you know his email, but I figured it out. 
Um, so we can actually go just based on meeting someone and we can enter their email if you ask them for it or if you get it from their business card. We can look up that person. Just trying to pull up my email. Um, figure out where they work. Uh, figure out what their Twitter and Facebook is. We can actually pull up LinkedIn and a lot of other social networks as well. Um, I can set a reminder to, to reach out to him in a week or in a month or I can set a custom date. Um, and then I can choose to sync this with my address book or follow him on Twitter or email him. We started in 2014, so November 24th. Uh, it was me and Liam just kind of working part-time before that uh, while we had full-time jobs. Um, we launched it in March, so it took us about five months to get something viable into market. Uh, we put it into market, and we started realizing pretty quickly that some of the assumptions that we were making uh, were maybe not correct. Uh, one of the biggest, very obviously, or should have been obvious to us, but hindsight is 2020. Uh, an app that has a single or no single use case is really hard to get uh, market share on. Uh, ours was a single use case in that, or not a single use case in that both people needed to have the app in order for it to function properly. Um, so this is kind of like w led us to where we are now with a single use case and you can look up emails. Uh, you can even scan business cards in our app. It's kind of like a Swiss army knife of, of business card apps. Um, and then the more recent uh, introduction has been really just uh, focusing on helping salespeople now take this neat tool that helps them when they're uh, on the ground and actually get it into their company's uh, CRM softwares or any other tool that they use at work in order to manage their deal flow. Um, so let's say you're a Salesforce user. Most, most large companies that uh, use, a, use a CRM are using Salesforce. Salesforce. Um, you can single authenticate with it. We'll pull in your API. Uh, you can save that. And then any of the contacts that you get, including Elon, can be exported. Um, let's export Adam as well. Um, to your preferred CRM. Uh, so now our, not, we're not only pulling in kind of like that person's email or their name, but we're pulling in all the social profiles that we've pulled on them. We're pulling in a phone number if you've requested them to send your phone number. Uh, and the beauty of this, and this is uh, uh, I think one of the, the most powerful pieces, is that if Adam uh, ever changes his personal information then and he uses Zap as his personal companion or his, his business card, it'll update automatically. So you don't have to worry about your data getting stale. It'll always be, be up, up to date and relevant. And so because we're in Canada, how are you going to make money? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So uh, the economics that we see working for this is very similar to the New York Times crosswords. So the New York Times crosswords has a really simple uh, use it up to a certain point. Uh, and then a monthly subscription will get you the actual puzzle and a bunch of advanced features. Uh, we think that um, out of the box, this tool is really helpful for people. It's solving a problem that, you, that, that people would pay a monthly recurring fee for if we gave them extra features like more lookups and more syncs with their CRM. Um, we can build the individual salesperson on a month-to-month on -month basis at a really small fee, or we can kind of scale and build more enterprise tools into this. Uh, and sell it directly to the company, so direct to enterprise. All right, everybody, big round of applause for Mike and Zap. Thanks, guys. <laughs>